What I'm about to mention has nothing to do with the movie I'm currently reviewing, but I thought I'd bring it up anyway for donating a dollar to Variety, the children's charity. With my ticket purchase to see this film, I got this neat little pin promoting the upcoming Trolls World Tour movie out next year. I haven't seen the first one though. Comment below if I should or should not, if you have seen it. But I just thought I'd like to bring up that donating to any worthy cause like this one is always nice to be able to do. What is up everybody? Random random man here bringing you my review for Queen and Slim. Described as a modern day take on The Legend of Bonnie and Clyde, the plot of this drama basically follows two African Americans played by Jodie Turner-Smith and Daniel Kaluuya who after their first date must go on the run after killing a police officer during a traffic stop gone wrong. Going into this movie, I was very much looking forward to it. The trailer instantly got me hooked to the concept of this film, one of its stars also hooking me in, Daniel Kaluuya, who has really been blowing up as of late as an actor, also starring a newcomer, Jodie Turner-Smith, and this being a screenplay brought to us by Lena Waithe. Now, I've only known her for being in movies such as Ready Player One, though she is an Emmy-winning writer on Master of None with Aziz Ansari. So to see that she's written up a story that looked very relevant to today and put in the aforementioned Bonnie and Clyde twist with it, it got me so intrigued to see the film. Starting out with the cast and their performances, I'll begin by talking about the title couple themselves, Queen and Slim. Playing Queen, again, is Jodie Turner-Smith. Now, this is her film debut, and for a first-time performer on the big screen, I gotta say that she truly made for an outstanding performance. Now, she is a character who, on her end, is pretty stuck up and uptight and very uh, of the law, literally, as she is an attorney. Compare that to Daniel Kaluuya's Slim character, who I also think is superb in this film, and he is more passive and not the most macho or manliest of men out there. And you see a dynamic between these two characters in the most unlikely of ways. These two, from the get-go, do not get along, but they are, of course, thrown into a really bad situation and must learn to get along. And over the course of the movie, their chemistry really does empower the movie. Naturally, since our title characters are on the run, they interact with quite a few individuals along the way, including uh, Queen's Uncle Earl, played by Bakeem Woodbine, and he gives a scene-stealing performance here. I thought he was hysterical, not just because of what his character is all about, he's basically this rundown pimp who has his ladies stay with him out of pity, and also I found his character funny because he reminded me a bit of Dave Chappelle throughout, not just in their similar appearances, but also in the way they inflect a lot of their humor, and in certain moments, like the way the camera shines onto him, I thought, is that really Dave Chappelle or Bakeem Woodbine? I don't know, but <clears throat> either way, this dude gave a really standout performance here. There are other supporting players here, like Chloe Sevigny and Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, who I remember seeing in Baby Driver a couple years ago in an extended cameo. Uh, they play this couple who don't show up until later on in the movie and don't really have much to contribute with the film, but I thought it was nice to see them. It goes without saying that I think that the one two player title leads here, Jody Turner-Smith and Daniel Kaluuya respectively, are the ones that synergize this movie to great avail. The writing of this film by Lena Waithe makes for a movie that is, from the get-go, something that is very uh, of today's times. And when the movie does open with it on the first date with our title characters, it's something that at first makes for an unlikely romantic movie because, as I mentioned earlier, these two leads do not get along. They have pretty opposite personalities. It's on that ride home that things go from eh to worse as a cop pulls him over for a minor traffic infraction and he ends up getting killed, but the movie does clearly show that it's in an act of self-defense. Queen does end up getting shot by the police officer and then Slim does take his gun and now turning into a chase film slash getaway kind of journey. 
all that I've mentioned, which is shown in the marketing for this film and occurs within the first 15 minutes, right before the title screen even shows up, does make it seem like this movie is a modern black version of Bonnie and Clyde. But I think that's a disservice to describe this movie in that way, because it is on a basic level that if you want to relate or connect uh, this movie to something that is tangible and known. But on the one hand, these characters don't go around robbing banks or killing more cops like Bonnie and Clyde did in real life. As this movie is more so about the relationship that Queen and Slim do have in that unconventional romantic light that I mentioned earlier. This film, for how tragically topical it is with it playing up the Black Lives Matter movement that is really prevalent today and police brutality being something that is so debated in the news and in regular conversations, Queen and Slim is a surprisingly soulful movie. And that is a big credit to what writer Lena Waif has brought. This movie does bring up a level of sweetness that I didn't expect this movie to have. For how frantic our main couple feels as the movie progresses, there is an element to it that makes them want to stop in certain ways, both literally and figuratively, to reflect on what they have now. Them living in the now while still having the police behind them and always being ahead, even though they know at any moment they can be caught and it can be all over. It's that pace that made this movie feel very intense for me and how it is focused at the hands of director Melina Mansukas that had it all the more engaging to watch. This is actually her directorial debut for a feature film, as Mansukas was previously known to have directed music videos like the one for the Beyonce song, Formation. And when I see how this movie is in style and overall feel, it is very reminiscent of that video. It's certain moments that have our main characters at the center of it all and bobbing and weaving throughout the narrative that made me just enveloped by how this movie is in its atmosphere and aura. Because this movie is so alluring in how we are in these characters' situations while being in something that is so overbearing to be in, it never loses sight on how this movie really is about how these two are developing with each other. Adding on to all of that are the technical merits, and I've already praised the direction by Matsukas, and for a first-time feature film director, wow, it's already impressive with how the movie is shot, beginning there. This movie has a lot of lighting with it that is tuned to not only get our characters in certain spaces to stand out or be literally hiding in plain sight, but also just in the way it moves. It has a very absorbing kind of feel. It is not just pristinely shot on that front, but also in adding on to the flow of this movie, it's something that I thought was never boring in the slightest to look at, no less. And also the way it's edited. The movie runs at about uh, two hours and 15 minutes-ish, about a little less than that. The way scenes transition from one another and how it is overall timed, I never felt overstayed their welcome. There's always a relevant kind of moment on screen with our characters specifically. Their paranoia and the reliance of each other is so played up on that front as well. And I also have to give a shout out to the music. I both uh, mean the original score and the soundtrack because this movie plays up itself as being a black movie, but not in the stereotypical sense. I both mean that in the way our characters are, because like I said, Slim is not the manliest of men out there, and Queen is not the stereotypical sassy black woman that we see. On that front, this movie isn't like a black exploitation movie or any movie of similar light. It also applies with the music too, because it does give the feel of a movie feeling like it is identifiable with our main characters being black, but also in the way it flows. It fits perfectly with montage sequences of them either driving into who knows where or just the more intimate and tender moments that we have between our title leads. It all adds into a movie that I feel has so much style with it. I will say though that one aspect of this movie stylistically that didn't entirely click for me had to do with the use of narration in it. 
during some conversations between our characters and the dialogue that is being said, sometimes it'll be used with shots of them looking at each other without moving their mouths and talking and having voiceover narration say the lines for them, almost to like an introspective kind of execution or just showing off how much more of this movie is in being very reflective. While creative, I didn't think it fit with this movie because of how urgent both the pace was for how long this movie was anyway, and what this movie was doing in being already about the relationship. There is also the matter of this movie being very rooted in today's current events. So far that has caused a bit of outrage online for that, but it's also gotten people talking whether how artistic the movie is in the end or just what it does in being a reflection or overall look of what is going on in real life today. And I know this movie is not going to click with many people for other reasons too. I saw this one couple walk out about two minutes before the movie even fully ended, mainly because I guess they were not satisfied with how this movie goes. And some people can even say, oh, it is predictable in many uh, aspects and how it is a story like this that is ultimately one of fantasy, but also something that is not entirely fictitious because it is so played up to a level of realism. But I feel it's what this movie is doing while entertaining me and other audiences out there that I think is really the most impressive about this film. It ends with one of the most powerful final shots that I have seen in any movie all year. And it was effective in getting me to think about what the context of this movie is entailing, not just for real life, but also in the context of the characters. And I know I sound like a broken record by saying that a lot of films I've seen recently I've loved and said that they are among my favorites of the year. This is also the 50th official 2019 release that I have reviewed, by the way. But I've gotta say that, especially in the second half of 2019, there have been quite a bit of movies that really have clicked with me to a high regard. And now that we are in December, the last month of not just this year, but this decade, there have been a lot of movies coming out in succession that have really had me spoiled in so much great content. At least that is what I think. And to become that broken record once again, I loved Queen and Slim. This is among one of my favorite movies of 2019 thus far. My end of the year list is going to be so difficult to craft up, especially with other movies I do want to see by this year's end. I'm going to say that again within my next few reviews in all likelihood. I highly recommend it. My final verdict for Queen and Slim is four and a half out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Queen and Slim, social media links, in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.